Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang & Bang. If you're familiar with my channel, you're probably familiar with what this is. It's a compact folding survival bow by Primal Gear Unlimited. And I rank it among my most favorite products that I've ever gotten in for review, especially just for the fun factor. Well, after I reviewed this about a year ago, understandably, Primal Gear has seen a lot of success from the sale of this really great product. But they didn't stop there. They've branched off and making accessories like this great multi-position molly webbed quiver. And they've also gotten into making survival knives like this. It's the Hell and Back Survival Knife Carbon Steel Edition. And it's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Hell and Back Survival Knife is the first knife designed from Primal Gear Unlimited. It's made in El Salvador by Imacasa of 1075 Carbon Steel, though it has a stainless steel brother that is different enough to get its own review. MSRP is $149, so it's currently available for $129 directly through Primal Gear. It totals 9.5 inches long with a 4.5 inch handle and a curved 5 inch edge with a semi scanty grind. The sheath is thick leather with a loop for an included ferro rod and striker. At least when new, the retention is really, really good. And the sheath does a great job of protecting the blade and the scales from damage. Nothing beats the smell of new leather, and this sheath does not disappoint. Though many value a leather sheath for a woodscraft knife, a Kydex sheath is in the works for those with that preference. The butt of the knife has a lanyard hole and a slot for a strap or additional lashings. The handle has dark gray micarta scales with spindle sockets on each side for use with a bow drill. A neat feature is that they're drilled all the way through to provide an additional lashing point in the middle of the handle, which I think is a nice touch. The spine has moderate jimping that's effective without being rough on the thumb. There's also a notch for striking a ferro rod, and none of the spine is coated with finish like you find on other knives, so you don't have to remove it before using the spine as a striker. The blade is 4.5 millimeters thick, hardened to 58 Rockwell, and black epoxy coated for additional corrosion resistance. A few weeks ago, I had to take down a small tree that was pushing on my fence, and I saw this as a perfect way to test the chopping abilities of this knife. As you can see, the Haps knife made quick work of limbing the tree, and it was even easier to use than the machete that I often use for this task. That's really impressive. I think part of it is the belly of the blade. It catches a limb and, and helps it to grab on, and the, the grind of the blade is enough of a wedge to do a good cut, but not so much that it binds the blade in there. And uh, it just, limbing a green tree is no problem. That's actually, that is so impressive. That's a lot of, of chopping ability out of a knife that's not really that big. When I say that a half knife has a lot of chopping ability, I mean it. I'm loosely holding the handle, letting the knife do the work. With the majority of its 10 ounce weight in front of the handle, the half knife cuts deep. Primal Gear Unlimited also had batoning in mind when designing the half knife, and I found it worked well for splitting kindling out of dried wood with straight grains. As I've mentioned in previous knife reviews, batoning is not something I've ever been forced to do in order to build a fire, but I do it in testing for those who want this function. The Habs knife wasn't so good at batoning hardwood with a wavy grain. I'd want a longer knife for this task anyway, but the drop to the spine forced the point down with every blow and made keeping the knife level very difficult. There are a few other tricks that could be used to baton wood like this with this knife, but I still wanted to try the standard way first. So, one of the issues I'm having with batoning with this blade is that even though it's nice and heavy and I really like the grind for for splitting wood, uh, when batoning off of the front of the blade, there's too much of a drop to the point and my baton wants to skip right off it. It's hard to get a good hit. I think I'm gonna try and baton off of the back of the blade and see if I have better luck. Splitting with the tip of the half knife worked a lot better, though there isn't a lot of room for a baton when using this technique on a nine and a half inch knife. Nonetheless, this method worked really well until I hit a knot, which can't be blamed on the knife. That gave me the chance to demonstrate another batoning method that uses a wedge to do the splitting. I just picked up a piece of kindling, which turned out to be perfect for the job. 
This is not just a great way to split a log, but it's also a great way to recover a knife that gets stuck. And uh, there's the knot. Whew. Making a feather stick is a great way to test the edge control of a knife. And this is definitely a task that the Haps knife did exceptionally well for its size. The semi scanty grind makes controlling the angle of your cuts very easy. And I was able to practically fillet shavings off of this piece. Oh man, this is so easy. This is actually amazingly simple. Wow, <laughs> this is really, really nice. The blade is just biting right into the wood and it's very easy to get these shavings to peel back. This is almost effortless. I've never had a knife this big be so good at doing this. And that's that grind for you. It makes it very easy to control the blade angle into the wood. I really like that. I think that's what this is best at for, for the size of the blade. Clearly, and I, I could just make that all the way up the stick, but you know, it doesn't do anybody any good to watch that. And you could even break these off and use that as tinder fantastic we've had a wet summer here in North Carolina so I like to use just a small piece of petroleum jelly cotton ball to catch the sparks this is usually all it takes to ignite the damp pine needles that are such an abundant source of tinder in this part of the country the spine of the half knife needed no modification to work well as a striker on the included ferro rod Though a cheap gas station lighter is the easiest way to start a fire, ferro rods make a great backup and it's a fun skill to practice. Like a lot of survival knives, this knife has a notch for work hardening wire. You can get through wire fences like this, you can cut wire ties, there are a bunch of different uses for a notch like that and basically all you do is you wedge the wire that you want to cut in the notch and then you twist back and forth. And as you twist that back and forth, the wire gets weaker and, and weaker until it finally just snaps like that. <laughs> Sometimes it just takes two twists. This works really well. In designing this knife, Primal Gear Unlimited wanted to create something that was extremely useful in a manageable package and something that could survive a lot of abuse. As a chopper, I was really, really impressed with what this could do. It could do light batoning. For heavy batoning, I just want a longer knife, period, and certainly one with a straight spine. But that's not something that I've ever actually needed to do out in the woods in order to get a fire started, not in the East Coast where I am. I can't wait to try this out on game processing. The archery season in North Carolina has just started up. I haven't had anything walk in front of me yet that I want to take, but I guarantee you that this is the knife that I'm going to be using to process the, at least the first deer that I get. And I'm pretty sure with the edge that it has and the blade shape, this is going to make it a very easy job. If you want to learn more about the Hell and Back Survival Knives from Primal Gear, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log in and click the like button. It'll really help me out. If you want to help the channel even more, be sure to click right up here so you can see how you can contribute to my Patreon campaign. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff like all of this stuff from Primal Gear Unlimited. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.